I have a question for you. Do you honestly think it's still possible for someone with the average salary to stack one full Bitcoin in 2024? If you do, how? I mean, if you look at the math, it looks like this goal of one Bitcoin is going to be further out of reach pretty soon with the halving coming up in April. This is just a couple months away. The scarcity for Bitcoin is going to tighten. The amount of Bitcoin created will be cut in half to only 3.125 Bitcoin every block. And right now today, there's only 19.6 million Bitcoin in circulation. This is not a lot for cryptocurrency, but in reality, there's a lot less because it's estimated that four to six million Bitcoin have been lost forever. People throwing out their wallets, people losing their seed phrases, stories of guys such as James Howells from the UK who threw out a hard drive with 7,500 Bitcoin in it. That's 7,500 Bitcoin that's lost forever. So in reality, there's more like 15 million Bitcoin in circulation and there's 8 billion people in the world. So of course, there's not enough Bitcoin for everyone, but let's be real. Not everyone in the world wants Bitcoin. Not everyone in the world cares about Bitcoin. So even if we narrow it down to the 50 million millionaires in the world, they each can own one full Bitcoin. Even half of all of the millionaires in the world can own one full Bitcoin. But even if we knew that there were exactly 15 million people in the world that wanted these 15 million Bitcoin, it would not be a one-to-one -one distribution because we have large entities who hold a substantial amount of Bitcoin. The United States holds over 200,000 Bitcoin. China holds over 190,000 Bitcoin that we know of. MicroStrategy owns 190,000 Bitcoin. So with so few Bitcoin available and so much demand, it seems pretty difficult to get to one full Bitcoin. And I thought it was very difficult when I entered crypto in 2017. I put some money into Bitcoin, when it was trading at $6,500 in October 2017. And then pretty shortly after, it skyrocketed all the way up to 20,000. And I remember thinking, wow, 20,000 for one Bitcoin. That's, that's crazy. I'm not gonna own one Bitcoin. But then the price started coming down and it went down even more. And during that time, I was thinking maybe now I could get to one Bitcoin, but I didn't buy anything because I was so confused. I didn't really know what I was dealing with. So, I basically rode my money all the way up and then it came all the way back down. And instead of thinking, how will I get that money back? I said to myself, let me learn about this crypto thing. Let me actually pick up some skills and knowledge. So I started listening to podcasts, watching videos, reading every book I could get my hands on. And the book that really changed it all for me was the Bitcoin standard. After reading that book, I changed my entire approach. Instead of thinking, how do I get to a certain amount of Bitcoin, let's say one Bitcoin, or how do I get to my investing goals, I came to this conclusion that I believe that Bitcoin will be worth more in the long term than it is today. So I changed my approach to buy what I could afford. So that's what I did. I would dollar cost average into Bitcoin every week with a certain amount of money, with money that I could afford at the time. So I no longer had this goal of reaching one Bitcoin or reaching a certain investing goal. So I continued to do this for a while and I would get Bitcoin at all different price levels, even as low as 3,500 per Bitcoin. And without a goal in mind of getting to one Bitcoin, I just continued to do this. And then one day I eventually looked at my portfolio and I hit it. I joined the one Bitcoin club. Now, something that made it easier was I was single at the time. There are a few main factors that will either speed up or slow your stacking journey. If you're single, you can get there faster. If you live in an expensive city, this can slow you down. And at that time, I was living in New York City, which is one of the most expensive cities in the world. So that definitely slowed down my journey. If you have kids, if you have a mortgage, if you have car bills, health bills, I'll be real with you, this is going to make it more difficult. This is going to slow down the journey. But the most important thing is your family and health. I think it would be foolish to take money needed for family and health and then put it into something like Bitcoin. That's why I'm a proponent of buying what you can afford. And you never know, you do this long enough, you might just wake up one day to a one full Bitcoin portfolio. And what you can afford changes with dips. I was able to afford more Bitcoin 
when it dipped. Now, I'm sure Bitcoin isn't going to dip back to 3.5K, but we'll probably see more dips. We just saw a dip a couple of weeks ago of 20%. In 2021, when Bitcoin was trading at $69,000, which is a lot of money, I'm sure there was a lot of people thinking, I'll never be able to afford one Bitcoin. And then just last year, 2023, Bitcoin was trading at $16,000. It's about being patient and thinking in the long term. When the dips come, it sounds good in theory, buy the dip, but the actual dip is scary and the last thing you want to do is be the guy that waits for the dip and then when the dip comes you wait more you wait more and you wait more and in the end you become the skeleton meme who never bought any bitcoin at all and right now one bitcoin is forty seven thousand dollars this is a lot of money even for someone with an above average salary but maybe the new one Bitcoin is 0.1 Bitcoin because 0.1 Bitcoin alone would put you in the top 9% of Bitcoin holders in the world. But if you do have a plan of getting to 0.1 Bitcoin or one Bitcoin, the most obvious plan is ditching altcoins and going straight for Bitcoin. This method is slower, but more stable. The faster method is going into altcoins. Altcoins can move faster. They can make bigger multiples and then convert that into Bitcoin. However, there's risk there. If you've been in the previous bull cycles, you know this isn't as easy as it sounds. It's pretty difficult to know exactly when to exit altcoins. For me, my journey was pretty much straight Bitcoin and Ethereum for a long time. And then once I stacked enough, only then did I really go into altcoins and NFTs. But buying Bitcoin or altcoins is not the most important factor that will determine reaching your investing goals. Whether it's Bitcoin at 4,000 or 40,000 or 80,000, the most important step with the biggest impact is increasing your skills that increases your income. Is this easy to do? No. Can it be done overnight? No, but you have way more control on increasing your skills and income than you have on controlling the price of Bitcoin. You have way more control. So whether you want 0.1 Bitcoin or one Bitcoin, whether it's trading at 40,000, 80,000 or 100,000, the most important thing you could do is increase your skills that increases your income. And in that case, you'll be able to reach the one Bitcoin club.